In order for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. Now, that should start alarm bells ringing, because in the previous video we were talking about sine of x and inverse sine of x. So sine looks like this. Okay? And it keeps on going in either direction. And if you draw a horizontal line through sine of x, you'll find that you hit multiple values. And so sine of x is many to one, not one to one. So if I so what I'm saying sounds like it's contradicting itself. However, what this means is, and how we can get around this fact, is instead of looking at the whole of the graph, I'm going to pick a portion of the graph that is one-to-one. -one. Okay? And we do that by restricting the domain. So, for example, if I was looking at a curve that looked like this, then we can quite clearly see that this is many-to-one. So in order to find an inverse for this function, okay, so let's say this is f of x, and I want y is equal to f of x, and I want to find f minus 1x, I'm going to restrict the domain, so I'm going to choose that I'm just going from this point onwards, okay, and ignore that part of the graph. And so I've made, by restricting the domain, a one-to-one -one function. Okay. So, why is it this way? Why can't we have a function as being many to one? Well, the problem goes back to the function machines that we looked, we've looked at before. If you've got one value going into your function machine, okay, and we could actually have many values going into this function machine, and getting out the same answer at the end. So we've got many to one. If I invert the process and go the other way, I'm going from one, well, to many. So in actual fact, I'm, I haven't got a function at all. So because I can potentially go from one answer to a number of different ones, and I can't choose which one that is, that must mean that this process, going backwards, could not be a function. So we must only have one value of x giving me one value of y, and so that I can invert this process going from one value to one value. So that is why f of x must be one to one in order for me to find f minus one of x, the inverse function. So what we're going to be doing in the next few videos is looking at restricting the domain, we're going to be looking at the trigonometric curves and how we can invert them and what those inverses would look like.